Now see what she's doing right there. She's puddling the paint. Mm -hmm. Instead of painting it, because if you paint it, you show the brush strokes. Yeah. Underneath, there's a light coming through, and if you can see the light through the paint, that means that it's... That brush stroke. Yeah, and, and it's not going on thick enough. A lot of times, when, when this paint is dry, we'll turn the cell back over on the other side, and, and then you'll see all the lines outlining the colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, if she's done it correctly, you'll see not even a little bubble of paint, which would let the light through. It'll all look just smooth. And if you put a lot of water in the paint, what'll happen is this will puddle, so it's just a like like black glass, just very mm -hmm. smooth. And when it dries, it's very smooth, just as smooth as that cell. No kidding. And if you get it too thick, of course, and you paint it or stroke it on, it's just a bunch of bumps. And that's it. Is actually watercolor though. Type. Yeah, it's vinyl paint, house paint. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Only a lot, a lot more pigment in it. Yeah. In animation, once the music is recorded, then it goes to the storyboard artist. And then he listens to the song and tries to visualize what the song means and puts it up there on, on the screen in his own mind's eye. I don't have any control of the music once, once the animators start animating to it because I can't say, gee, I'd like to change this because then they'd have to go back and redraw all those drawings of these uh, critters uh, speaking certain lines that I want to change. So once I'm done with it and I give it to him, then it's over for as far as what I need to do with it. All right, we got, we got two things to accomplish in this sequence. One, to show where the owl lives and the fact that he is causing the rain and what is the device that's causing the rain. So within all this swirling, we'll have the rain just pouring out of that area as opposed to in the opened area. So it won't be raining in everywhere, just out of the clouds. So let's start over here with raindrops. As we pan, we see the valley is totally flooded and we'll arrive on the owl's den. Now there's music cues that are going to give us that. Now listen. One. We should arrive here. We have a character in this play that uh, to me is very exciting. He's what we call the creature of the night. And this creature is an owl. He hates light, and so he doesn't want the sun ever to come up again. And he plays this gigantic pipe organ, and when he plays, out of the pipe organ come clouds, black clouds that fill the sky. And as they fill the sky, rain comes down from them, and it rains everywhere, and it floods the countryside. And he loves that. I mean, he thinks that's really terrific when it just rains. So it, he's in his element. And uh, this is the guy that uh, Chanticleer has to come home and he has to duel with and he has to get him out of that country or we're going to just flood the world. So the old owl is, and he's the opposite of Chanticleer. Chanticleer is a rock star. The owl is grand opera. And when he sings, it's bah! It's the opera sound. So the two of them battle it out in any way that they can. They, they stand for different worlds. I positively loathe Rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Let me be your rooster and let me roost with you. Let me be your rooster, or let me hear your sweet voice coo. Girl, you've thrown me for a loop. Well, you're the number one chick in this chicken coop. An animated film is actually uh, takes a long time to produce maybe two years and if you're fortunate and you have enough good people you can do it in a year and a half but bear in mind that first of all it's many thousands of little pieces that all have to come together and be a unified whole a motion picture that will go into the theater that will excite an audience let them feel something so it has to feel like it has the signature of one person on it and not like 350 people were making it. So it takes constant caring for, constant fathering, constant uh, vigilance, talking to people all the time, comparing ideas, comparing notes, comparing points of view. And we do that daily. In fact, that's what I do all day long as a director, is I go to every department and I say, okay, now what color are you coloring that? because those, uh, I don't think, are the right colors for the emotion of that scene. Why don't we go back and try and experiment? Let's try, since it's an angry scene, let's try putting a lot of this in reds. You're, you're coloring this blue, and blue's not going to work, so we do a lot of, of adjusting. What is it the director is looking for? Does he want it to he be? He wants it really hot. So I was looking at a couple of these colors here. I don't know whether they would be too hot or whether 
to go out again. So it's been wrapped all the way around both sides. Okay. You can see it from the back, and I've done both sides down. here. Okay. Mm -hmm. See it. An exciting member of our cast nowadays is the uh, computer. We we use wavefront computers here right now, and they're doing a great deal of the drawing for us. Not so much in the in the acting part of the drawing, where the characters do a, a great deal of uh, of the emotional part of the acting, but in anything that might be a prop or a vehicle or any anything that has to change in perspective at all. We used to spend hours trying to figure out that perspective. Nowadays, what we do is plot that all into the computer, and then we move it around in the computer and actually make it move in towards the camera. And once we get all that working in the machine and we look at it on the screen, we say, that's good, and we just push a button. We say, print that, and it prints it out on paper. You're gonna do just fine. Yeah, but... Now, now, no, no buts about it, honey. Can I've done something awful. What is it, baby? Tattoo, snipes, peepers. Goldie, where'd you get this? From you, that night we first met. They were here? They're still here. Oh, oh why didn't you tell me? Because she wasn't supposed to. I believe that all of us are children inside. And so we really never outgrow the need for something that's fantasy. Something that we can forget that we're adults and that we have to deal with the world's problems and, and all of our problems of earning a living and taking care of our children and our families. So we can go out and just get into a fantasy for a little while. Animation does that so well because it isn't what you see around you all the time. And the characters are usually animals. Um, they're very much like the fairy tales that we grew up on when we really were little children. And so we kind of go back to our childhood for a moment and you get to relive moments of that and those are the magic moments of our lives. And animation does that better than any other medium. <laughs> 